check this out. Titanic, the story you don't know. The Titanic story is one that will live on for ages. Having inspired movies, documentaries, and exhibitions, you might think you know everything there is to know about the great unsinkable ship that was sent to a watery grave by an iceberg. But did you know it had two sister ships? Or that events leading up to and the day of its maiden voyage actually sealed the ship's fate? If you are ready to learn some amazing new facts about Titanic, its passengers, and of course, its tragic end, then keep on watching. Just don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring the bell to turn on post notifications so that you don't miss any of our daily uploads. RMS Titanic was built by a British shipping company called White Star Line. They focused on building comfortable and reliable ships. However, they found themselves in heavy competition with a North American-based company called Cunard, which had built the most sophisticated and luxurious ships at the time, the Mauritania and the Lusitania. The Mauritania set a speed record that it held for 22 years, and the Lusitania was renowned for its luxurious interiors. White Star Line had their work cut out for them if they wanted to beat their rival. So, in order to crush the competition, the chief executive of White Star Line, Joseph Bruce Ismay, commissioned the creation of three enormous ships – the Olympic, the Titanic, and the Gigantic. Masses of workers started building the Titanic at a Belfast, Ireland shipyard in March 1909 and managed to complete it three years later. RMS Titanic, at 882 feet long and as tall as a 17-story building, was the largest movable human-made object of the time. People marveled at its creation, and 100,000 people attended the unveiling. The ship was the height of luxury. Its interior was inspired by the Ritz Hotel in London. It had all the amenities – a gym, a pool, a Turkish bath, a barber shop, and its own newspaper. It's modest by today's cruise ship standards. But keep in mind that it's really impressive for the early 1900s. The wealthiest passenger was John Jacob Astor IV, who had a net worth of around $2 billion by today's standards, and his wife came along for the ride. There was also industrialist Benjamin Guggenheim, the heiress Margaret Molly Brown, and Macy's department store co-owner Isidore Strauss and his wife Ida. They probably paid a pretty penny for their trip, given that the most expensive tickets would be about $97,000 today. Most of the passengers were third class, though. There were around 700 of them, and they paid just $20 to make the transatlantic crossing. The ship was big, beautiful, and innovative for its time. However, there were some logistical mishaps that could have been prevented. The Titanic only carried 20 lifeboats, which, altogether, could hold 1,178 people. That meant there were seats available for only a third of the people on board. To us today, having enough lifeboats for everyone is a no-brainer, but the Titanic actually carried four more boats than was required by law back then. Perhaps if there had been enough spots for everyone, over 1,500 people wouldn't have lost their lives. And all those people would have been spared if the ship itself hadn't set sail in the first place. And that actually was very close to becoming the case. You see, on the day of departure, the Titanic came within two feet of crashing into a nearby ship in the dock. And that was right in front of the eyes of thousands of excited onlookers who went to see the Titanic embark on its maiden voyage, headed for New York from Southampton on April 10, 1912 with 2,240 passengers and crew on board. Had Captain Edward J. Smith not missed the nearby ship, the whole trip would have been cancelled. But in reality, the Titanic shouldn't have been on the water in the first place. 
Experts have now discovered that the ship's hull had been weakened by a huge fire that broke out during the construction process three weeks before the date of departure. And White Star Line was fully aware of the damage that had been done, but they decided to sweep it under the rug. As fate would have it, the iceberg hit this exact weakened spot, tearing a huge hole in the ship, allowing the waters to flood in, and sending her to the depths of the ocean. The Titanic made two successful stops in France and Ireland before sailing off to New York. On April 14, the crew received reports of ice sightings from other ships, but the Titanic's path was clear and the sea was calm. At 11.30 p.m., a lookout spotted a 100-foot-tall iceberg straight ahead and immediately warned the captain. Because the ship was moving at top speed, the crew only had 37 seconds to try to avoid a collision. The Titanic's engines were reversed, and the ship was turned so that it wouldn't hit the iceberg straight on. It instead grazed the ice, which punctured a 300-foot gash in the side of the ship's hull. After the impact, the captain sent out distress signals, which were picked up by the Carpathia, one of Cunard's ships. The Carpathia immediately sailed at full speed to the rescue while trying to avoid icebergs itself. The Olympic was on its way to New York when it got the Titanic's distress signal. It turned around at once and also sped off to assist its sinking sister. Unfortunately, it had to travel more than 500 miles to reach her. Having calculated that the ship would only stay afloat for an hour and a half, the captain and chief engineer rushed to order an evacuation. Chaos ensued, and it took them almost an hour to lower the first lifeboat, which had only 28 people on board versus the 65 it had space for. In the end, the Titanic actually stayed afloat for almost three hours. During that time, families were separated as women and children were loaded onto the lifeboats first as the law of the sea dictated. According to eyewitnesses, when the Titanic started to sink, Isidore Strauss told his wife to take a lifeboat, but she wouldn't leave his side. Isidore himself refused to board one while there were still women and children on the ship. Ida gave her seat and her coat to her maid and decided to stay with her husband. The director of White Star Line, Joseph Ismay, stepped into a lifeboat as it was being lowered an act he would forever be shunned for by society. Molly Brown did make it into a lifeboat, but Benjamin Guggenheim went back to his room, changed into a formal outfit, and got ready to meet his fate. The Titanic started sinking from the front, lifting the back out of the water. As it continued to sink at this angle, people were thrown into the freezing 28-degree water. Once the bow was submerged, its stern, or the back part, couldn't take the pressure and broke off. The ship finally sank at 2.20 a.m. on April 15, 1912. On the lifeboats, Molly Brown tried to lift the spirits of her fellow passengers and begged the crewmen to go back to find more survivors, but they refused. Because of her courage, the press would dub her the unsinkable Molly Brown. The ship's baker, Charles Giffon, swam in the water for two hours with almost no effect to his health. He said he hadn't felt the cold because of all the whiskey he'd drunk. The survivors of the Titanic were rescued by RMS Carpathia at 4 a.m. and taken to New York, where they were greeted by 40,000 people. The exact number of people who lost their lives in the catastrophe has never been agreed upon since the original passenger and crew list had a lot of misspellings and didn't include members of the band. Most experts put it at around 1,503 casualties. Some people actually had tickets for the trip but didn't board. One of the most powerful bankers of his time, J.P. Morgan, was supposed to be on that ship but had to cancel at the last minute. Milton S. Hershey, the founder of the chocolate company, also had to cancel. 
Just imagine how history would have changed had they decided to step foot on the doomed ship. And they're not the only members of the Just Missed It Club. There are dozens. The ship's wreckage still lies 12,500 feet below the surface of the North Atlantic, 370 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. It seems the cards just weren't in it for the unsinkable Titanic. Do you know any interesting facts about the Titanic or her passengers? Tell us in the comments below. Give this video a like if you learned something new. And always remember to stay on the Bright Side of life!